Good evening. Welcome to Fine Print. I'm Molly Gampir. Over the last few months, a series of recent scientific findings on global warming and its impact have sent alarm bells ringing. But this is a climate crisis that you haven't heard of. That's what the authors of the latest report have to say. The Himalayas, one of the world's most vital water resources, are melting and the pace is another wake-up call. If action is not taken with utmost urgency, we could lose two-thirds of the glaciers. We summarize the findings for you over the next few minutes. Home to the world's highest peaks, covered by 30,000 square miles of glacier ice. The mighty Himalayas may not be as mighty as they were. Its glaciers are retreating, and the rate at which they are retreating is of huge concern. About 210 scientists and analysts based in Nepal have worked together for three years to release this report on the glaciers. They are warning us about the consequences of our carbon dioxide emissions. If we don't reduce our carbon footprint, we will lose about a third of Himalayan glaciers by the end of this century. The Paris Agreement's most ambitious role is to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. But even this could lead to the disappearance of 36% of the ice caps in the region. The world's third pole is warming up faster than the global average. Many glaciers across the Tibetan Plateau and on the eastern stretches of the mountain range have retreated 20 to 47 percent since 2000. Since the 70s, the region has lost 15 percent of its ice. If carbon dioxide emissions go up, the temperatures could rise further, leading to more meltdown. A rise of 2 degrees Celsius could mean a loss of 50 percent of the glaciers. Scientists from the Kathmandu-based International Centre for Integrated Mountain Development have said this is the climate crisis that we haven't heard of. The Hindu Kush Himalayan region stretches across 3,500 kilometres. It covers seven South Asian countries and China. The melt from the region supplies waters to 250 million people. It feeds rivers that support about 1.65 billion people. But how does this concern the common man? For one, the repercussions of the Himalayan glaciers melting will be felt by us all. They will be devastating. Second, the disappearance of the glaciers would make the weather pattern erratic. Crop cycles will be affected, economic development will be hampered, and health would deteriorate. There will be more natural disasters, lakes could burst. Previously reliable water resources will be disrupted impacting 10 of the world's most important river systems, including the Ganges and Indus. The authors of the report have said that it's time we start paying attention to the mountains. In order to adapt to climate change, the region would require up to $4.6 billion per year by 2030. This could even rise to as much as $7.8 billion per year by 2050. But will world leaders wake up to the crisis and work to limit the damage? Bureau Report, we on World is One. And that report, prepared over a period of five years, aims to give us a real sense of how global warming will impact our mountains. It's a collective crisis which needs collective action. There have been a number of reports, as we stated earlier, with several warnings. We know enough now to act, but will that action be taken and how soon? The study calls for strategic action, in other words, to act against unplanned urbanization, decarbonization or replacing existing fossil fuels and meeting new demand from carbon-free sources is one of the other solutions suggested in that report. To rein in greenhouse gas emissions is the urgent need of the hour and the most crucial step to be taken if the mighty Himalayas are to be saved. The emissions of the most abundant greenhouse gas, that's carbon dioxide, would need to be reduced to limit global warming.
The target is to limit the temperature increase to 1.5 degrees Celsius. The 2015 Paris Climate Change Agreement had set a target to keep average global temperatures from rising. But even if the most ambitious steps to limit global warming are taken, at least one third of the glaciers would disappear by the end of the century. In other words, a third of the glaciers can no longer be saved. Let's go straight across now to Dr. Aditi Mukherjee, one of the authors of that report, who's also a water expert. Uh, thanks very much indeed for joining us uh, this evening, Dr. Mukherjee. It's a comprehensive report uh, which uh, yet again serves as a reminder of how serious the crisis is. Act now or lose two-thirds of the Himalayan glaciers. That's the warning coming in very clearly. What should the immediate priorities be according to you? I think the immediate priority would be to really take this report seriously and <clears throat> kind of devise means where all the countries, so it's not as if the, the melting of glaciers is a problem of this region alone. Himalayas are a global asset and it plays such an important role in climate regulation globally. So the first act would be to actually for all the countries, the developed as well as the developing ones like India and China to hold on to their pledge and remain within the 1.5 degree. That is by doing that itself, I think that's the only way that the Himalayan glaciers can be saved. The second one is looking regionally. We have to talk about these eight countries. They have to come together and cooperate with each other at multiple levels. In this report, we talk about cooperation in data sharing. Right now, so many of our countries, we don't share basic data on water. We do not share basic data on disasters. That is something that the report really highlights, the need for cooperation across these eight Hindu Kush Himalayan countries. The third action that we talk about is action at the local level. And here is, I would say, most of the encouraging signs are coming out. I mean, for instance, there are a lot of very interesting work that is happening by local grassroots organizations, especially in the Himalayas, for reversing things like drying of springs. So the report highlights the importance of uh, coordinating national regional action along with these uh, with these local grassroots action that would ultimately be one way in which your solutions are equitable they are participatory and they have the least amount of harmful impacts on the section of the society who can least afford to have those impacts like the poor mountain communities up there for instance in Ladakh Indeed. So there's a lot on paper, Dr. Mukherjee, and uh, the real gap lies in taking that uh, and translating that into concrete action on the ground. There's a clear gap there. Uh, you talk about uh, the leaders taking this report seriously and uh, the people on the ground taking this report seriously. Are you hinting towards a lack of intent or a lack of clarity or a lack of consensus? Um. Maybe a little bit of both, not so much lack of consensus in our part of the world. I don't think anybody doubts the reality of climate change. Maybe the extent of it is something that I think this report catches many of of many of the people unaware, not as scientists. We, we kind of knew that this is what was happening. So I would say more of maybe um, how do you maybe lack of intent maybe to a certain extent and the fear that taking a lot of climate action might actually jeopardize development goals. And there I would think that you can do green development without really compromising on, on the development needs of countries like ours where still a, a, a quarter of our people are below poverty line. So, so development needs are important. For instance, we still are one of the most energy and water insecure people, uh, you know, this entire region. So uh, that's where I think the actions that balance the both needs to be taken. All right. So there is, uh, of course, hope at the end of all those uh, uh, challenges and uh, the crisis that we are staring at, which is only worsening, as uh, Dr. Mukherjee is telling us, with each passing uh, year. We're going to leave it there for the moment. Thanks very much once again for speaking with us and helping us delve deeper into what that report says. Mm -hmm.